Uh, midge patterns or buzzer patterns, and uh, this one's the quilled buzzer. Uh, basically, it's just what it is. It's a peacock eye. And what you do is remove the fine fibre. There's the peacock eye there. Now, if you look at there's the, the colour on the other side. Now, if you press on these, you'll see how it goes much lighter. Now, that's the quill. But what you have to do is remove this fine hair. It runs along one side. And what I use is this here, believe it or not, come out of a Kellogg's packet, a crisp packet. And uh, I've been using this to remove the fine hair. So I used to use a rubber. But the problem with the rubber, it wears out really quick. And this here is it's just a like a rubber tire type thing. If you find a piece of rubber like this, I mean it will last much longer and it will remove the fine hair for you or the fine fibre. Now who I'm using, this is a size 10, it's a V175 and it's a Camasan and the thread I'm going to be using, which is quite heavy, but I'll flatten out as I go, is a UTC 140. You could use the, the 70, the, the finer one. Now it is a flat thread I say it's black. Now what I'm going to do is put down a layer of thread. Now, to flatten the thread, if you spin your bobbin holder anti-clockwise, you'll see that the thread flattens out. And I'm going to take away the waste and then carry one down. Just opening out, as you can see, the thread as I go to make it really thin. It covers quick, that's why I like it. Now here's your peacock quill stripped of the fibre. Now the way I tie it in, now I tear it from the actual the eye, the, the peacock, so I'm left with this tiny piece of skin a fibre, which I tie that I tie in with this. Now what I do here is come in, you get a loose turn round and pull it into that point there. And then take your thread up as quick as you can at least two thirds of body length of the shank and then you can either rib the fly, meaning like you can come up like this and space it out, which I like to do as well, which gives a lovely effect, or you can bring the quill up so it's touching. Gives another or a better effect. Now don't worry about that, that was just the very tip of the the quill breaking, it is very sparse. So just take your time and work your way up. To get to this point here. Come across your thread, and then what I do here is continue all the way up towards the eye. Once I get to the eye, and the remains of the peacock, just remove that. Now I'm going to put a cover over the top of this, meaning this is Mirage, it's a UTC, and it's the opal, and large. Now I'm going to tie that on the top, just on the way back down, so two or three turns on the way back down, I just slightly offer it to the side, on my side, bring the thread over, so it, lie, it lies on top, take the thread all the way down, until you come to the quill itself. Now I'm going to put some cheeks on this, in this case, this is some dyed goose bite. Now these are the very fine ones near the, the top of the, the feather, which I like. There's less bulk in these. Take two, just bring them in. Now what I'm going to do here is just love line them up, but take away the actual points, and then offer them on the side, and just fold them down each side, slide them in. Just watch where they're sitting. You want it really close to the sides. Just before you do anything, I would double check exactly where they are sitting. And I like to get them sitting right beside the mirage. And carry on up with your thread to the eye. Come two thirds of the way back down and come back up. Now that's plenty. Now bring the goose bite forward and on top of the eye to a single turn. Basically, what I'm doing here is folding them or crisscrossing them. See, they're crossing one another. It means they're really nice and tight. Always keeping the thread tight. Then bring over your mirage. Now you may get a slight ripple, but bring your nail on top. 
tighten up. Now I'm looking for this to touch. Oops, I'll try this again. Just to show you. Now once you bring the goose forward as I said, get them crisscrossed, bring the mirage then over the top and as a loose turn, just leave it, allow these to pull down, tighten up, must allow it to tighten and I say I'll put another turn in there so it doesn't slip this time, you'll see that it allows the mirage to touch, the goose by it. The reason that what happens if you allow that, the colour comes into the actual, the mirage itself. Then, take your thread up. Just forget everything just now, just keeping the thread nice and tight. Come in. Trim away your thread, come in with the edge. Your scissors, trim away that, your mirage, and then peel off. Goose by it. Have a look, see how things are sitting. And that looks okay. Now you could three or four coats of varnish. It's entirely up to you. I would say about three is fine. You could go one layer of super glue and then a couple of layers of varnish, which I like to do at times. So just all the way around. It's good when you've got a vise that can rotate like this. And the brush I find is much, much better. If you put too much on, you can actually take it off. It's very easy to do that. One there. And that there is one of my favourite midge patterns, and it's the quilled buzzer. Very simple and easy to tie. And very effective. 